Hey, this is Aaron. And Blake, we're AB Data. Thanks for walking through this Alteryx Weekly Challenge with us. In this video, we're taking a look at Alteryx Weekly Challenge, number 256, working for the weekend. Here we have some official money data from the PGA Tour from each of the last five years, stacked vertically in one data table. This can present some challenges as we're working with data with nested header information. Lots of really familiar challenges working with spreadsheet-based data. So some great practice here if you'd like to follow along. We're in the Alteryx Academy Weekly Challenge, number 256. Taking a look at the start file, we'll take a deep dive into our input data momentarily. But the output that we're asked to create is interesting. We're creating two separate top five listings. First, looking at the top five ranked uh, players based on average earnings per event in the last five years. And then we'll look at the total money earned for players that have not won any events in the last five years. But one of the first things that we need to deal with is that the year information is provided once and it's above the headers, which actually repeat uh, between each of the data tables. And we have an empty record that also separates information across the years. So we've got some really familiar challenges. Um, the, the first step that we're gonna take of identifying the year, setting it off to the side, and then filling it down uh, is unnecessary for this problem, for identifying these top five players. But if we wanted to build a cohesive data table and take the analysis another step, we uh, would want to pass along the year information. So one way to do this would be with a series of multi-row formula tools. So here we can write a simple condition where if the row plus one, so the row below our active row contains the text string rank this week, then we want to identify the value from the official money field because that's really our year. So the year is only provided once above each of our five distinct data tables. And before we ultimately skip over this record to promote our, our field headers, uh, we want to set this value off to the side and then fill it down. So the multi-row formula tool is a really fantastic tool that lets us uh, write functions or expressions that operate vertically in the data tables. Some great examples are contained in the example canvas. Uh, the first example I can actually copy and paste into our workflow. It's updating a field called year and it is performing the fill down expression. And I just need to change this from null to empty. We're dealing with empty strings as opposed to a null value. And here we'll identify the uh, year, fill it down until it changes. So if we were to scroll down to record 257, we'd see that the year updates from 2020 to 2019. All right, so now we can shift our attention to the field headers themselves. And after using a sample tool to skip over one record, we can then use the rename mode that takes the field names from the first row of data. So lots of interesting configuration methods for the dynamic rename tool. One of the more common ones is to use it to promote data from record number one into the field headers. So we can teach Alteryx we wanna do this for all of our fields except for a field called year. So that one we created ourselves. And now we can filter out some unnecessary records in the data table. So where our headers repeat in between each of the years, we don't need those records anymore. We don't need these empty or null spacer records. So we could do this with independent filter tools, or we could write a custom filter expression. So in this case, we'll write a quick custom filter and we will reduce the data table by filtering out all the unnecessary records that we don't need. So now we have a nice clean data table, but our data types are unfortunately not exactly what we need 
to perform our analysis. So the events, the money, and the victories, these are all currently thought of as V strings. And again, this is really common when we're working with Excel or CSV based data. But using a select tool, we can quickly update the data types. Then one of my favorite tools, the summarize tool, we can use to group by the player names and then sum those three numeric data type fields. So the events, the money, and the victories, we can perform the sum function and quickly rename them to match the desired output. So our 1,280 raw data points get summarized into 405 unique player names. And the second part of our analysis is going to have us create a top five listing for players that have not had any victories in the last five years. So I'm gonna drop a filter on the canvas then, and we'll come back to this uh, where the total victories is null. So this will bifurcate our data stream and split it into two groups. So here are the true records. These are players that have not won anything in the last five years. So we'll come back to them. But the first top five list that we're asked to create is based on the uh, average per event. So we're going to start with the total money earned and then divide it by the total events played. All right. So here the output is a double. So even though we're starting with some integer fields, we're creating a double. So we can get some detail down to the penny, I suppose. After sorting based on this new field, average per event, we can drop in a sample tool and take the first five records. And starting with Dustin Johnson, a whopping 399,000 per event. That's almost $100,000 per day of a four day tournament. My goodness, not bad. All right, so we've got our top five listing up above. And now if we shift gears down below and sort the data based on total money. So we're doing a slightly different sorting order, but we can actually copy and paste the sample tool. We also want to take a top five listing. So starting with Louis Oosthuizen, who's made 11 plus million in the last five years without winning anything. Not a bad day job. All right. And one tricky component to creating the output that matches our um, output format is we want an empty record that is null all the way across. Uh, so I'm using a text input to create uh, an empty uh, field structure with, with one record essentially. And within the union tool, I'm configuring it in such a way where the output order is specified where stream number one is our first top five table Stream number two is that empty spacer record. And then stream number three is our second top five listing. So the output that we have, we actually have 11 total records, which matches our output. We can organize our tools a bit by putting them into containers. And a little documentation, a few comment boxes will bring this canvas to life, life a little bit. And hit the run button. We can see this thing work from start to finish. And that's a good excuse to go hit the driving range and work on our golf games. Have a great week. Thank you for learning with us today. Good luck on your Alteryx journey. For more information on custom training, managed service automations, and more, please visit our website at abdataconsulting.com.